Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> Hey, how's everybody doing today at YouTube? It's man child. All right, so I got in my uh, Master Universe Origins Wave 8 doorstep drop-offs. <laughs> yeah, I ordered these a little while back from a company. It's a hobby shop. They sent me emails from, I think, Malaysia. Seems like a lot of stuff's coming in. And, uh, you know, I, I paid her shipping and whatever little markup they have. And uh, they DHL it. So, yeah, it came pretty quick. Uh, super excited to have them in. A couple of characters really, you know, really excited to have. Um, see anyway in a line but uh yeah i'm gonna uh review it all four i like doing that in my waves um try to make as quick as i can right we'll knock out the art and the uh the bubble cards i'll have them out of package so we'll review them one by one and uh finish up so uh let's check them out okay first up let's talk about sun man a little bit or we'll dress the elephant in the room so to speak he was a mattel creations uh exclusive now actually i actually got one with many other people and it's been eight months and we still haven't got one <laughs> so, and now he shows up in wave eight and speaking of wave eight he, he also replaced the mini comic book trap jaw which i think was kind of i don't know why they decided to do that you know i was i was thinking about it maybe because there's just all there was all bad guys in the line they want to throw a you know a new good guy a, a, a color he-man if you want to call it that which i have a story that later on we get him out of package but um here's our back and just kind of shows the features more or less that all right so they call it a phoenix wing that can push over the neck snap in that strange looking you know that wing thing he has on his neck uh okay sword in hand they call it doesn't look like a sword but and he can twist nothing special there's a card art pretty cool has all new figures on it and there's our art there looking good um yeah he-man scout or sun man and now, Pigman's going to be also in the Origins in the Sun Man wave I've seen. Out of, there's six or seven new figures coming out with the with his... Yeah, this wave. I I really like Pigman, but the other characters I've seen, I'm, I don't care for them, to be honest. But anyway, that's uh, it's cool. He looks he looks like he fits right in. One of Skeletor's minions, and you can read the little bio up there if you like. Next up, we got our anti-tyranny He-Man. I'll tell you what, man. This guy looks really cool. You know, for another repaint, we've seen a few now between the Faker and, you know, the, all the variants coming out. Uh, I Just look at that shade of black. Just the way the hair, especially with the vintage eyes, you know, the eyes. It looks like it comes with all the weapons, which is cool. They could have just thrown a sword. Again, we get them out of package, we'll check it out. But And here's the back of the card, same thing, just a sword in hand. Nothing crazy, you know, I cross-sell, but yeah, their art's cool. With the power of Hell Skull, the fearsome He-Man overthrew anti-attorney using his unmatched strength. Uh, so check that out. It has its own castle. Hell Skull, they call it. That'd be cool. I just seen something like that in Origins. But yeah, I'm liking them. All right, check this out. We finally got our Vintage Horde Trooper. I love the tone of him. That silver color. Um, It looks like he has a split action. Now, I do have the Powercon ones. And when we get them out, I'll compare them. Mine didn't work. I couldn't get the action future work. Maybe I'm not using it right. <laughs> I remember doing a review on him, the Powercon set. And I didn't even realize... As stupid as that is, as big as I am in a Mo2, that, that was an action feat. I mean, I knew it split apart it was, but I didn't understand about the button. I never had a vintage War Trooper. I had a classic, so I, I tell my backstory on that in one of my um, videos, but... It's cool to have one. Hopefully that uh, action feature works when we get them out of package. And again, here's our back art. Yeah, so you press the symbol, looks like you push, right? It's supposed to blow apart the action feature, or the damage, you know, the battle damage on them. Armor, okay, uh, you know, same thing, cross sell. Check out that art. And look at that, we have Thunder Punch He-Man. I'm looking forward to getting him in here now. Uh, they already teased Dragon Blast Skeletor. I think it was on a Dridor, the, the uh, excuse me, Stridor pack. I can't talk today. Stridor packaging. It'd be interesting to see what they're going to do if we see a Thunder Punch He-Man. Because I, I don't see a cap feature. I know I've read some stuff online, people talking about that. You know, with the child safety standards. And it considers it, I guess, some type of, in this day and age, like a firework device. And that, that varies from state to state laws. I don't think we're going to see that. Maybe it'll be a sculpted mimic one in a backpack. But I think it will be cool, my opinion, if they left some type of spring punch in the arm, like put that action feature, maybe the waist, and maybe a sound effect in the backpack. You know, like a speaker pre-recorded when he punches, snaps, it makes it like a like a sound or something. Well, we'll have to wait and see. And last. Why did I put Claw for last? Just to tease everybody. I'll tell you, I don't know about you. He's he's the one I'm most excited to have. I Out of the whole line, Clawful's, he's the guy for me. He's not even out of package yet. I'm loving how he looks. And our card art. Twist in a power position. Okay, looks like the mace snaps. It. That's cool too, like buzz off. And it's cool that the arm, the claw now can articulate up and down where the vintage couldn't. So you can position it better, the weapon better. Like Again, like I remember my buzz off review, I showed that. And as the working lever, that's cool for the, for the uh, claw. Cross-sell. Look at that. 
Yeah, awesome artwork fighting Teal. Now, here we go, Whiplash in the back. Now, he was announced in a leak with Mantena and some Pigman and whatnot for later this year. Um, again, I would have loved to see Whiplash in this line. It would have went perfect with Clawful. I would have liked to see him before Sunman. Sunman's his own thing. It's fine with the waves coming up. The Mattel Creases, like I said, we didn't even get yet. But Whiplash should have been in this line with him. They already have a lot of tooling from Buzz Off, and you know, I don't know. But I really hope we get him because that that's the next guy to be exciting to see. So that was our little story introduction. So let's rip these guys out of package, and we're going to check them out. Okay, first up, Trapjaw. Wait, that's not Origins. <laughs> uh, I want to make a quick update, a correction video, if you don't mind. Um, so I got a couple comments. I did check out my trap Joe video in Revelation. I like the guy overall. Now I did. I made a mistake when I was putting some of the scouts and whatnot on, and I I caught it in my video. And I did. I corrected it, but I put the wrong edit up, you know. And I realized it when I watched the playback. And then I got to take the video down. Pretty much, so I'm gonna, let me just, I'm going to set them up and show you what I what I didn't correct and what I tried to fix. So more or less, I had it set up like this. The biggest complaint people said, well, not a complaint, but they said that the Velcro goes in the back. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, you, know, you can put it in the front, too. It works either way the way I set it up. It You know, but it's just supposed to spin around, and I had the belt underneath, which again works, and you can set them up this way. I wasn't paying attention to the art, and then when I caught it, like I said, I tried to fix it. But let me show you the if you want to set it up proper to the filmation. Okay, so basically I just turn the vest around, Velcro the backs the right way, and you, you take the head off, you put this piece on. But here was the problem, too, of mine, I noticed. The belt, if you want it cartoon accurate, it's supposed to go on the back and snap it. See, I'm having it. you got to really have a hard time, wow, with, you know, going over this piece. But anyway, like that, okay? And then you put your head on, and that's cartoon accurate either way will work but that's the correct way i apologize but i'm just showing that correction so okay first up we got our anti tyranny he-man i love the way they did this guy that black color let's call it blacker than black or tar black that looks so spooky on him i mean even though he's another repainted he-man it's just fun i like the way the hair is done the armored really cool i'm so glad they you know they put an anti tyranny he-man into this line yeah, that head, you know, of course, the vintage head we all love. Um, it would be cool to give us some people like that original head that I, I didn't care for that. I think it's good on Prince Adam, but yeah, it wouldn't be cool if you included two different heads or something. But yeah, all your typical articulation, you want to check out that. Look at the, just the way they did the teeth and the eyes in there. That's really cool. It's like two different layers. You know, I didn't have to go that route, but I think that's sharp. Um, so yeah, you know, everything we've seen before without getting too involved, but you know, ball joint, okay, shoulder, elbow, as far as articulation, obviously. His hand, he's got a gripping hand on the right side and then an open hand on the um, left side. And that's more going to be used for the shield. So unfortunately, we don't have two hands to grab the axe and the sword at the same time. I wish they would have did that, but yeah, whatever. Okay, he's got our waist. Okay, go out. Knees. Um, my knees aren't too bad, but they are getting a little loose. And got the foot. And his uh, our ankle and foot. Okay, that's our back. So I'm telling you, I took the armor off. Anybody's curious with the buck underneath, more or less your armored. Uh, yeah, same thing. I love that black. That's cool. That orange. It's like a dark orange color. But you got to watch too, because I'm already. I see some QC issues, a little chipping on that. So yeah, it could be a problem. But yeah, if you're curious, what he looks like without the armor on, you know, typical aesthetic. But I'm again, I that black is so cool. It's really creepy. And I put the armor back on or take it off. I just slip it over the head. You got to pop the waist apart, bring it like so, and then you pop. Like so, like that, and we got a little just square peg on the back. I'm gonna pull this down, and snap it in. Yes, he has a little spot, just like the uh, regular He-Man with for sword or axe. And he comes with three accessories, which is pretty cool, right? The, the typical axe done in that that black, full power sword and a shield. Here's a close up of the axe. Yeah, again, just like nothing different for a skull, but yeah, that black color. It's pretty neat. And there's a full power sword in the same color black. And a typical He-Man sh shield, also in the black with that, you know, bright orange color as the match his uh, belt and uh, his what's on his cross armored. And there's a little piece of art to show in the dark areas what's removable. And here's the new comic. So all four of them come with the same comic. We'll just go over one. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice cover. Clawful's face looks a little strange, but let's open it up. You can pause and check it out. But um, yeah, I like an art. Pretty neat. It's cool how they just st stuffed all these figures in here. You know, the, the match the toys. Um, he's got the Horde Troopers, anti turning He-Man. 
None of that. He's beating up Clawful. All right, check that out. Or oh, the Sunmia. Sunmia looks cool in it. The way just the wings are spread and stuff. That's pretty neat. Which tells me this was already planned. I mean, it, it takes him a while to put a comic together, not to mention the toys. So, like I said earlier, with getting rid of uh, the comic book trap jaw, that, that must have been done months back in order to get the comic book ready for the toys and have Sunman all this art done, I think, anyway. But, all right, it's cool included. So, yep, just cross art. So, that's the comic. And we got a little weapon set up, right? Sword, hand, shield, and the other. Again, it's open, so all you can use that is for shield. I put the axe in the back. Check out what that looks like. And the axe in the hand and the sword in the back. And for fun, a little comparison, we'll get a couple different variants in together, right? We got our faker, we got our new flying fist team man, and now our anti attorney he man. Yeah, look cool together. I like, you know, repaints, but I'm a sucker for that. They look great. And that, uh, that anti attorney he man is just, uh, awesome. I'm just goes great in the collection. I'm so glad we have him. So let's move on to the next figure. Okay, let's talk a little Sun Man for a minute. So if you're not familiar from what I read, if you're curious, the Sun Man line was more or less created around 1985 by, I think her name was Yila Eason. I'm saying that right? Uh, she was a Rutgers professor and she was a mom. She uh, she also became the founder of the company called Olmac Toys at that time. Uh, she wanted to address the lack of like representation in the comics and action figures in the, like the 1980s. Uh, you know, it was like something after a three-year-old son. He he was upset and he noticed that there were no color heroic characters in the He-Man or the OG or the vintage cartoon. Uh, what she really loved watching and he'd become afraid that he could never become a superhero because of his color, the color of his skin. And that was right before Clam Champ. And that was around 1986. Uh, real quick, as I mentioned earlier, my opening, my story. So where I grew up, I call it a ghetto at the time. I grew up in a ghetto. A lot of my friends were all color and we all collected He-Man. And one of the one of the color friends I had, he actually brought at the time a vintage Sunman. I was about ten, and I didn't, you know, this was a time when you we had Child's World, and your mom, you know, every mo couple times a month you would go, and you would see what characters. Of course, it was before the internet, and he brought this Sunman character, and I was like, "Who's that?" And he goes, "Oh, it's a new He Man. It's it's Black He Man. I, I think he called it. He didn't call it Sunman. He didn't have packaging, but I was like, "Oh, awesome." You know, I thought that was cool because, again, it, there was no color before Clam Champ. And uh, I thought that was awesome, you know. And at the time, A-Team was around and, uh, you know, uh, Mr. T. You know, it was like a well, hero of mine and stuff. So I thought that was cool. But we went looking at the store. I'd never seen him. But apparently it was a Sun Man part of that collection. So I actually did see a vintage Sun Man one time. And we got to play with him. It's interesting that is. So anyway, it's the story on that. So let's bring this guy in for a closer look. Hey, up close, um, everything on him looks very Moto. You know, I love the uh, just the sun armored and you know the bracers and this typical loincloth, the boots, little star. You know, it all fits right in. That wings very unique, kind of cool, I guess, kind of the back. But yeah, that head sculpt, yeah, it's not working for me. <laughs> I don't like it. It's done well. I just all the features, the eyes, the hair. Uh, yeah, excellent sculpt. Paints great, but he kind of reminds me of like. Gary Coleman from Different Strokes in the 80s. I don't know, or something. Which I love that character. I, I watched that show. I don't understand where the inspiration's head came from. Um, maybe it was the mother's son or something. And I say that because the vintage Sun Man and with the Sun Man line coming out has a different head. Has a rougher, tougher head that just, I don't know, it seems more Motu to me anyway. I mean, anything go Motu, but it's something I would rather see. So yeah, we're going to do something about that. But all right, let's, uh, let's move on. So here's the wing. That's pretty interesting, and like it showed in the back of the card art, it kind of sort of pops off the neck. Oh, uh, hip. All right, easier to take the head off. <laughs> I was supposed to take it off anyway. So that's kind of a close-up of that. Pretty interesting. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't move or articulate, but it's kind of what they give you. As far as the articulate, yes, it has really loose on him. But even with the wing, the wing kind of slides around all over the place. I guess it would be kind of cool, because being it don't articulate, kind of move like it's... You know, it's kind of spreading its wings or going back and forth, I guess. Um, yeah, but the head's really sloppy. It's kind of articulation on that. Arms, the same thing. Uh, we've seen, right? Elbow, shoulder joints, left to right, up and down. He's got a closed hand on the right side. and Okay, close in on both sides. Uh, okay, same. Uh, waist. Okay, legs go all the way out and bend at the knee. Knees are really tight. My knees are really tight. This, this side, wow. Other side, too. I like that. And the boot spins. And there's our foot. And here's a close-up of his weapon. 
pretty cool. They called it a sword, I think, on the back. Sun sword or something like that. I'm calling it, but yeah, it's kind of that. And there's a close-up of his sun shield. That's pretty neat in itself. I like that. You know, it's uh, it's kind of different. I'll snap the weapon, the right arm, and the sun shield. Now, usually shields have an open hand, but this one's just going to... Okay, they have words of will snap in like so. And lock onto the bracer. Just like that. And we'll give him a little rotation with his weapons in hand. Looks cool. I like the way just the stance you can pose that wing. It, it works. It's pretty neat. Now, we got our sun man set back up. And I took his wing and his head off. Why did I do that? Because I'm going to try a different head. Check this out. We got the Clamp Champ head, right? From the Deluxe. Clamp Champ Deluxe pack. This was the regular head that came on Clamp Champ. And the more open mouth or the angrier. It was a slight variant. I put it on my Clamp Champ. But let's try this head on some man. See what that looks like. Oh, man. Look at that. I fixed him. That is awesome. I'm liking that. The uh, skin tone matches, it, you know, the uh, body and everything. The wing fits on. Now, it is a little tight. The articulation is not great compared to the other head because of the sculpt or something. But there it goes. It works. That's great. All right. That's it. I'm going to call him Sun Champ. <laughs> yeah, that's all we needed. Fix that figure right up. All right. We'll give our new Sun Man or Sun Champ <laughs> a little turnaround with the new head. I'm liking that a lot better. Now I really like that character. So all it took was Clamp Champ's head. One of them. Either one from that deluxe pack. Yeah, that's... Now he's... That's a great Origins figure. I like that crazy wing. The armored. It's all coming... It's all coming to me now. <laughs> Shield, the weapon. Yeah, that fits right in. So, yeah, overall, I think it's a great character. Didn't like the head. Put Clamp Champ's head on. I'm super happy to have him in the line now. So, <laughs> that works for me. Next up, we got the awesome Horror Trooper. Yeah, so it's great that they finally put a uh, Horror Trooper in the uh, one of the waves. Um, there was the PowerCon exclusive ones, the red and black. I have them. I'll bring them and compare them a little bit. And um, I have a Classics, too. I really like that silver. That, that looks really sharp on him. Um, now, I never, like I said, I never had a vintage one before. And I guess the vintage was a gray white, very reminiscent of what the Classics did. And what I've seen in images, of course. But, um, yeah, it's cool to have one. So, uh, let's bring them in for a closer look. So, we got that, yeah, the horde, you know, the, with the big collar, all the armored on, got that head. Go up and down, um, can spin. Uh, you know, the articulation, because it's so, it's, uh, just a pet. Oh, there you go. It goes up like that. So, yeah, it's a good, with that kind of shield in there, the eye mask. I don't know. I guess it's, is he supposed to be a robot? He's supposed to be a guy in a suit. But it tells me he's more of a robot. Because of the action feature. Now, that's going to be the important part with this guy. Because I know my PowerCon ones and some other people, they didn't work well. Um, but, all right, let's go over the, articulate, the rest of the articulation. So, yeah, that, wow, that arm's really tight. Yeah, see, the body's already splitting apart. <laughs> but, um, when you have the arm all the way up, see, it pushes the arm apart. So, you can only go up that high, it looks like. So, oh, the waist fell off. There we go. Guys falling apart everywhere, but yeah, tight articulation, got the elbow. Yeah, really cool design in there. He has the closed, you know, semi-open hand or gripping hand on the right side. And the punching hand, we'll do the other one. Wow, articulation is really tight. It works well, though. Can spin. And he has a punching fist on the left side. And the power con ones have the same thing. It would have been cool to include another open hand. So they just kept it the same. I was hoping they would, but they didn't. Back to the chest. Um, all right, so yeah, our action feature. So we know now. This is the way I knew it to take apart PowerCon. I mean, you split it apart. You got that. All right, it's battle damage. It's pretty neat. Snap that. But you're supposed to be able to push the button, hold it around here, I guess. Tap it. Or... Okay, and that's kind of what it does. And it falls. Doesn't spring apart. I don't know if it's supposed to. Kind of see that in there. See, that seems really stuck. That little piece in there. So I'm not familiar with the vintage did, but I, I thought you're supposed to hit it, and both pieces were maybe I might have my hands in a way. See the arms in a way. Everything's in a way. Let me grab it down here. Yeah, it's the back blows open. This part doesn't come down. At least on mine. I don't know. So that's as best I can get this one to work. So anyway, that's uh yeah, that's kind of the action feature of mine. Um, if I'm using it right. It's got waist. Scene already comes apart real easy, kind of the inside. As far as the waist, yeah, I like that color in the belt there. A lot of cool details on this guy. Okay, spin would say that. Um, legs go all the way out. That's excellent. 
articulation for that. Knees are, I feel like they're on a ratchet joint. That's pretty cool. Is the other one like that too? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, all kinds of little sculptures and details. Uh, yeah, again, I love this color. Um, yeah, he also spins, so that would be kind of like the boot, more or less. Lower armored shin guard, we'll call. And he's got the big, the foot, same thing, spin with the right. It's kind of the back. <laughs> Even in the uh, back there, he's got some sculpting. Looks like some, uh, yeah, on a belt. Yeah, he did a good job with him. I really like the uh, all the details for uh, a horde trooper for the Origins. And this was the piece of paper. It comes with all the shaded areas. You know the deal. That what can separate a figure. This was Sun Man's too, I forgot. It's kind of funny you don't mention the wing. It, is, it does separate, come off, obviously. But that's those pieces. And this is only accessory. This one doesn't come with a crossbow. So it's kind of like that, yeah, horde staff. And that's a little weapon in hand, more or less. Uh, yeah, it just about falls out. My hand, these hands are really hard. They're like, they're not like that soft pliable plastic where you kind of form them. So see, it almost basically just falls right out. And it's, I don't know what he can really do with this weapon. It could be like a staff or something like that. And obviously he doesn't come with a crossbow. It would have been cool if he did. And, uh, but that was a spare one I had from one of the Horde Axe. So, curious what a crossbow looks in that hand. And for a little comparison fun, I got our other two Horde Troopers from the PowerCon exclusive pack. Obviously the black and the red uh, Horde Trooper, or it was the Crimson Stealth Troopers, I think they call them. Yeah, they look good together if you have those. And with the silver, you want to get a bunch of silver, you can army build. And the black and red ones could be the generals, or uh, depending on what rate you want to set up. So, yeah, they, look, they all look cool. And they're bringing one of the PowerCon uh, troopers. Same problem. I push this button. <sighs> Pushing this. Wow, see? It's all pop open. I made my finger. And it's very similar. It falls down. Sometimes it gets stuck. So, you can make sure my finger's out of the way. Okay, that one there, now it full. That one actually works better now. I'm sitting by the heat the heater. Okay. So, more or less, that's how the black one works. And a red one. Same thing, make sure my finger's out of the way. All right, now it falls down. And it splits open. So, it works very similar to the, you know, Wave 8 Horde Trooper. And, of course, if you got these guys, they also come with the different staffs and the crossbows. And, of course, the hands can change out. Or you can mix the weapons up if you want. And for one last comparison, I threw in my classic sword trooper against the Origins. Um, yeah, they go good together. And uh, you know what's kind of cool too? You can mix them up in a in a strange sense if you want. Um, you know, you could use the classics for he could be like the whole core troop or something. He can army build with the uh, Origins if you had a few of these. So I I like it. Uh, some I would do. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with them. You know, the action feature it works okay. Maybe I'm not doing it right, or mine's just getting stuck, or the arm's in a way. It's not perfect, but it's cool. I'm glad. I'm super happy you have them in the line. And finally, my favorite in the wave, and the best for last, in my opinion anyway, is Clawful. They did a fantastic job with him. You know, just for trying to translate that vintage feel into the origins. Obviously, that's what they're all about, but... Yeah, that nostalgia. I, I love the way they just did that head. That open mouth is really cool. You know, he's got the typical, the dark. Well, some people don't like that, those eyebrows. And technically, they're not eyebrows. I remember reading somewhere, they're not eyebrows. They're, because that's what I used to think as a kid. Why does he have fuzzy eyebrows? Silly. Kind of looked over. But uh, they were actually spines, or they were like uh, whiskers, similar to like a sea urchin or sea cucumber, those kind of creatures have in the ocean and whatnot. So that's basically what they are, which makes sense as a crab, crustaceous kind of muscle guy is right yeah so like i was saying check out that head i love the way they did that it's so cool i really like the open mouth too i like the teeth like that we're not used to seeing clawful with an open mouth and again like the dark eye i'm gonna call them spines eyebrow spines the eyes are weighted down it's that ridge you know all these bumps um all over the head okay the uh i don't know if they're like well they're supposed to be like scales or like uh if you ever felt a crab you know all the bumps all over there <clears> the <throat> top of the car pace, they call it. Now he's got the spines on the head there. Now, as far as articulation, you know, same thing. Up, down. Well, he really, mine's really loose to head on this guy. Left to right. But for clawful work, it's not too bad. Uh, just because of the jawline. And also back to the mouth for a second. I'm going to bring in my classics clawful. My stuff's in cars, I always say. But uh, if you're not familiar with it, you want to see the design. Just how well it translated, but even, uh, yeah, he looks cool. He's, he stands up well against the classic Clawful now. Obviously, more details, I always say. And, you know, it's a lot more adult-like theme, what do you expect? But you can see the closed mouth and how they did that open. I, I, always, I always wish they did that with the classics or gave another head. 
to close one for a nostalgia and an open mouth. So I'm I'm really I'm glad Origins did that. As far as the body and armored, um, yeah, he has that armor we're all familiar with. Real nice paint job in there. It's the front to back. Yeah, I love the spines going down. Okay, uh, it's seems like it's kind of it's pretty soft. Well, um, so you would just snap it. Let's check. Let's check out the buck underneath. Right, two pops here like so. Get them off. And then you got to pop the head off. So let me do that. We'll come back to it. And that's just your buck with the armor off front and back. Nothing special. I thought maybe it would have some kind of like the classics. But they, I, why would they do that? I don't think they're going to do like the origins, ridges and bumps. But yeah, it's a typical buck. It's your armored here again, obviously. Just soft. And it was just two straps. Kind of pop and lock like so. And you got to take the head off. All right. Just slide it overhead. Snap it on. All right. So back to the arms. Yeah, obviously the arm with that big crab claw. Um... You know, same thing, right? We'll do the articulation real quick. Elbow in and out, real tight. Nice. I like it. Feels real good in the joints. And we'll take a look at this big guy here. So that spins. And it has the snapping feature. Check that out. I feel. Uh, uh, uh. But, uh, yeah, it works pretty cool. And then, obviously, these, you know, smaller claw on the left arm. Articulations are all the same. And what I like with this, same thing with Buzz Off. This is cool. Not only does it spin, now it doesn't pinch close. It never did, but I like that alone that they have articulation, okay, in, in the claw alone for the weapon. We'll get to that in a second, but I, I, I like that they did that. Um, onto the waist, and then, you know, just our waist, okay? That's with the armor on, if you're curious. All right, legs do full split. Okay, our knees, like, like so. Twist the feet, and he's got these big creature feet. Okay, and that's the articulation with those. Now, again, this is going to definitely be for uh, the legs, these ridges, and the feet. And what Buzz Off has, that's, that's whiplash right there. You need a tail and a head. And this is the only accessory. Like we all know, Clawful comes with that mace. Um, looks like a different redesign with the handle. And that's our weapon in hand, and he's battle ready. And again, what's cool, yeah, I love how this, so this, pretty much the weapon snaps. Has a nice little groove in there, so you put this piece and kind of locks in. You can you kind of twist this around the claw, holds it really well. That's that's neat because like our uh, vintage one in the day, it just didn't didn't hold it right. It was like down like this or something. But it's just cool how you have all this different articulation. And if you have any spare heads laying around, you don't need or want anymore. His claw seems to hold them well. We're just using to get in the brawl with our newer guys. So overall, I really like this line. I'm, um, you know, it's cool. I think we have a lot of cool characters. That Clawful, like I said, number one, he's number one for me. He was the minute I see him in the package. I love that head, the claw, just the look, the nostalgia, all that stuff. It's just that's that's the one guy I wanted the most, and now I have him. <laughs> the, uh, you know, anti turning He Man's great. I would have rather see like Whiplash or something in, in his place first, but I, I have a feeling we'll see him in Wave Nine hopefully. From the rumors I you know I heard. Um yeah, the armor, that color, just the eyes, the what they give you all three weapons in a black shade that matches uh body. That's that's great. Core troopers, yeah, always fun, right? Can never have enough army building guys. I love that color. The action feature's okay, you know, it works, it's hit or miss. Maybe it's the way I'm doing it, or the arm's getting stuck. I'm not really familiar how the vintage work, but it it works, but it's just you gotta play around with it. Yeah, you can get a crossbow anywhere. Maybe you have a spare Hordak. It would have been cool if you came at one. Or you go on eBay, get a vintage, or just a... They're cheap. They're all over the place. I had to wire the weapon in hand, too. His hand doesn't... It's just it's just my figure, so I, I don't know what to expect. But they're very hard, but that's that's the solution. And it would have been cool if he had another open hand on the left side instead of a punching fist to hold a shield or two weapons, but he don't. And then as far as Sun Man... You know, after I put the clamshamp head on him, I, I really like him. I'm super happy to have him as an addition to my Origins figures. I like that weird wing. You know, I just like the colors, the whole sun god thing, you know. Um, yeah, the weapons are neat. It, it just, it works, you know. But that that was it for me, to just to, that head. Um, so, you know. But I hope that answered everybody's questions. I hope everybody's doing great. Uh, there's a lot of shelf resets going on. So hopefully this Wave 8 and newer Motu guys will be working their way to your targets and Walmart soon. And, uh, yeah, have a great day. Until next time, take care.